Hello and welcome. My name is Hemingway Jones and I make videos about fountain pens, inks, and journaling for curious people. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to speak about five big mistakes to avoid when purchasing your next fountain pen. Now, whether it's your first purchase or your 50th, these are things to look out for so that you don't end up with the wrong pen. Now, before we begin, these are mistakes that I've made. I think everyone's made at least one of these, if not all of them. So let's laugh along together. All right, let's jump into it. So a big mistake to avoid if you can is not trying your fountain pen first. Now this is a very easy mistake to make. We live in a world now where you may first encounter a fountain pen in a video like this one or from some other channel. It might really resonate with you. It looks like something that you really need or really fits into your collection. So you decide that you want the pen, but your only experience with it is really filtered through someone else who is using it on a screen. So you haven't had a chance to touch it, to feel its balance, to see how it writes for you, how it feels in your hand or anything else. So many of these purchases are very virtual, being filtered through screens, and then you buy the pen, and then it shows up and it either lives up to your expectations or it doesn't. So if you can, it's always best to try a pen before purchasing. One of the things I recommend is attending a pen show. They're a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of other pen enthusiasts and there's virtually any pen you could imagine. There's usually at least one there that you can get your hands on, perhaps dip it, try it, and see if it's the right pen for you. Maybe the other thing you could do is borrow one from your friend and try it out and see if it works for you. If you can, try a pen first. It will certainly help you to avoid all the hassle of sending a pen back because it didn't meet your expectations. Another mistake to avoid is buying a fountain pen for status. So this is a tough one because I know I'm guilty of this. Early on when I was first getting into pens, there were certain brands that I was just so impressed with. And I thought if I had that pen, it would have this transformative effect on my life. But I think you grow out of that pretty quickly. And then you just realize there are certain brands that you like the heritage, you like the feel, you like the nibs, you like the story, you like that everything's in house, the artistry, whatever it is. But certainly to buy a fountain pen simply because you think it confers some kind of status on you, it's probably something you want to avoid. Rather, try to think of it like this. The pen doesn't make you cool, you make it cool. Whatever you buy adds to your personality, your way of expressing yourself, and it just makes you that much more interesting and much more of a powerful person through the choices that you make. Now, certainly anything you buy will be celebrated here, but I think you should just consider that status is not something that's really conferred by a fountain pen. In fact, they're all sort of lumped together by people that are not pen enthusiasts, so it might not even have the effect that you're going for. Nevertheless, pens are something to enjoy. I enjoy new purchases as much as anyone else, but I would say try to avoid thinking about a pen as sort of a status symbol. The next big mistake that you can make, and this is a real big one, and I think we've all fallen down this hole, and that is buying a pen because you feel that you need it. And what I'm speaking of is that there's this certain ladder of ascension in the fountain pen hobby where you start out with a Pilot Varsity, you move to a Kakuno and a Preppy, and then you might get a Jin Hao. From there, you're going to get a Twisby, then you're going to get a more expensive Twisby, then you're gonna buy a Pilot E95S, you're gonna find yourself up 
with the more expensive pilots, maybe a lovely Estherbrook pen. Before you know it, you have a Pilot Custom 823. Then people are tempting you with the Mont Blancs and the Viscontis and everything else. And before you know it, who knows how much you're spending. You can have a perfectly rewarding and incredibly enriching experience with a Platinum Preppy, a Pilot Kakuno, you could spend $30 on a Twisby Eco with a fine nib, with a stub nib, whichever one works for you, and stop there. That gives you the full fountain pen experience right there in one pen. You don't need to have the next one just because this hobby sort of lifts you up to the next grade and tells you that if you need to upgrade, that's the pen for you. Keep in mind that many of the channels that are saying that to you are owned by pen companies. So their motivation is to get you buying more pens. It's fun. You certainly can. It's a wonderful hobby. You could certainly spend your money on much worse things, but don't feel as if you have to buy that next pen because it's the next one in the ladder to some ultimate goal of some mystical grail pen. Another big part of this is the idea that there's certain pens that everyone must own. I've probably said that myself on this channel. Sometimes it's rhetorical, but in truth, there's no pen that you must own. You choose what resonates with you, but there's certainly certain pens that people say, like the Lamy Safari, you must have it. Actually, that's not a bad topic for a video. Pens you must own. But um, yeah, it's probably a bad direction to go in. Even the Pilot Custom 823, I love that pen. I can certainly recommend that it's one of the finest pens out there. It's not abhorrently expensive. So it's sort of aspirational, but within most people's budgets, you could buy that pen and stop. But there's no pen that you absolutely have to own. Like the Lamy 2000. Many people in my comments love to tell me I have to have a Lamy 2000. It's very tempting. I've been holding out, certainly up until now. But yeah, it's a tough mindset if you're thinking that there's certain pens in this hobby that you must have. You could stop with the Twisby Eco. But, you know, I've mentioned it earlier in this video, I'll mention it again. If a certain pen resonates with you, demo it at a pen show, borrow it from a friend, and if you really get an incredible connection with it, then I'd be the last one to tell you not to proceed. My driving force in this hobby has always been curiosity, and it's gotten me into trouble with some purchases and some blind alleys within this hobby, but it's ultimately been very rewarding and it's really curiosity that drives this channel. So I certainly understand that, but I'm just trying to help you to avoid buying something that's not resonating with you when you could use those assets and that kind of money to get something that really transforms your fountain pen experience. Here's another big one, and some of these are really tempting, and that's the whole special edition, new color variation of whatever fountain pen. And I'll tell you what really gets me with this one is Lamy Safari and the retro colors that come out on occasion. That's so tempting to me because it brings back so much 80s nostalgia. I just want to pull the trigger on one of those. But really, when you think about it, it's just a color. You only have one hand. You can only hold one pen at a time. Do you really need six different Lamy Safaris of all different colors? Now, if you're an artist, maybe you do. And each one has a different nib and it's color coded. And of course, I'd be the last one to tell you what you need and don't need, but just consider this as a stopgap before making superfluous purchases. But at the end of the day, it's just a new color. I don't need it. I didn't buy it. Another mistake to avoid when buying a pen is paying full price. If you can avoid it, try to never pay full price for a pen. 
Try to be patient. There are certain strategies that you can use to try to get even a little bit off that purchase price. And certainly this really comes into play with those Grail pens, the more expensive pens like Pilot Custom 823, the Viscontis, the Mont Blancs, things like that. So some of the strategies that you can use are certain sales. Now some pens don't go on sale, but many pens do. Sometimes there's coupons. You can ask for gift cards from family at certain holidays, your birthday and whichever holidays you celebrate. So that's something to think about. Often there are discount codes that influencers have on YouTube and various platforms. So take advantage of those when they're available. It never hurts to call a pen shop directly and ask them if they can do a little better on a price. It certainly can hurt. At the end of the day, you can also make a valuable contact and friend and someone you can bounce your purchasing ideas off of and have a little guidance. And they can also do things like check the pen and make sure it's fine before it leaves their store. So that's a great idea too. Another strategy that I use is that I often use the strength of the US dollar right now to purchase something overseas that would have been more expensive, but is now a 20% discount. So you can look at some of those EU pens that are out there and see how the exchange rate works. Although you really want to check the return policy or deal with a company that you know very, very well as I do. So that is another strategy that you can use. And then the last one I'll say, and it's very important within this topic, is consider buying a used pen. There are so many homeless pens out there. There are pens that are just scattered to the winds from someone's beloved collection. Wouldn't it be great to have one of those for yourself? Some of them have been cherished, maybe haven't been used very much. They could be a few decades old and still have years and years and years of life in them. So if you're looking to buy a more expensive pen, why not pick up one that's second hand? It's really the equivalent of what your pen's going to look like in six months anyway. So why not cut to the chase, get half off, and enjoy that pen right away without worrying about putting a first scratch on it because more than likely it's already there. That's my idea anyway. I don't mind scratches on pens and I love the idea that a pen finds a new home after it's been sold by its original owner. The last mistake I want to point out today, and this is one that I am certainly guilty of, and that is buying a pen that really just does not suit your needs. And what I'm speaking of is that maybe you need a really tough and robust travel pen, like a Kaweco Brass Sport. And instead you buy something like the Pilot Custom 823, which is a fantastic pen. It's actually decent for travel because it seals up, but it's not very tough. It's kind of delicate. It's not something that you really want to just throw in a bag or have in a pocket when you're going through customs and you know, security. So think about what you're going to use the pen for. Is it going to be a daily writer? Are you going to take it to work? Is it going to sit on your desk here at home? Whatever it is, consider that first before purchasing that pen, because when it arrives, you want it to suit what you need it to do. Otherwise, there's going to be a disconnect and you're just not going to resonate with that pen. You're not going to connect with it and it's just not going to be the most fulfilling experience. So are you as guilty of these five things as I am? I mean, I wrote this video and I can tell you I've committed each and every one of these mistakes probably multiple times and I probably will again but I'm definitely making more of an effort to purchase more carefully, more strategically, more mindfully. Can you think of other mistakes to avoid? Let me know in the comments. I may do a part two to this one day. I just wanna pass more knowledge on to you and also to learn more from you. So if you've watched this long, please consider subscribing. I know about half of you that watch my videos don't subscribe 
and I'd love to have you along on this journey with us. So I'm trying to win you over, come on. Secondly, I have membership available. If you'd like to see what's going on behind the scenes, see blooper reels, learn about what's coming up, learn about process, all sorts of things, then join us in the membership section. I'd love to have you there. So I release new videos each week and I have a live show on Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We can speak directly then, I would enjoy that. So consider joining the live show. So thank you for watching today. I promise we will see each other again very soon, further up the road. So take care.